Let's call our council work session to order. Madam Clerk, would you read the roll, please? Mr. Jacobs? Mr. Morris? Here. Mr. Powers? Mr. Here. Lynn? Here. Mr. Amos? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Mr. Wilburn? Here. Here. Try again. Need a motion We're on the agenda? We are in complete disarray. Right need a motion on the agenda? I'll second. We have a motion and a second on the agenda. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion passes. Today we're here for the discussion of changes to the state of Iowa fireworks law through Chief Pat Trelor. Take it away. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Uh, Pat Trelor, Fire Chief. We thought it would be a good idea to have a work session for you to uh, try to explain to you Senate File 49 uh, our interpretation of the law change. It's significant. And to give you as council what we believe would be three options to go with uh, for the new law. I did hand out uh, the slide presentation that's uh, going on right now. So what Senate File 49 is, it's an act relating to the possession, sale, transfer, purchase, and use of fireworks, also known as legalizing the sale and use of fireworks in the state of Iowa. It establishes a seller's license that's administered and issued through the state fire marshal's office. The fees for those uh, permits or those licenses will go to the state and only to the state, not to us as the uh, local municipality. And the fees range, there's some for uh, volunteer organizations and church groups that are $100, but generally speaking, we think the fees will be somewhere between $500 to $1,000 and the state license uh, mandatory to sell fireworks. So you need this to sell fireworks in the state. Uh, licensed retailer community groups will be authorized to sell fireworks from permanent structures, and there, those are the dates there for the permanent structures, June 1 through July 8th, and December 1st through January 3rd. So basically uh, a little bit longer than two months. Temporary structures, the law states that uh, fireworks can be sold out of those from June 13th through July 8th. And there's no provision to sell out of a temporary structure uh, in December, which probably makes sense for our state. Uh, some of the dates and times that are relevant for the Senate file uh, 49, um, they give some time frames of when the fireworks can be used or exploded, and you can see there the first bullet point is uh, a person shall not use or explode, explode consumer fireworks on days other than June 1 through July 8th and December 10th through January 3rd of each year. And it goes on to say 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. is when fireworks may be used unless otherwise specified. And then uh, between the hours of 9 a.m. and 11 p.m. on July 4th, so they give a little bit of a longer time on the 4th. And then you can see um, for New Year's Eve, they allow them to go right up till uh, 12.30 a.m. So what is allowed under the Senate File 49? Uh, when we're talking about consumer fireworks now, it includes first class and second class consumer fireworks. And you can see there that first class fireworks, there's a number of them that are listed. Aerial shell kits, reloadable tubes, chasers, helicopters, aerial spinners, and so on. Second class would be uh, cone fountain, cylinder, cylinder, I can't say that word, fountains, flitter sparkers, ground and handheld sparkler devices, and so on. So not to be confused, these are not display fireworks. So think of the ones from my Waterloo days where uh, a professional organization shoots the larger shells, and we've had a 10-inch shell used in our city. So we're not talking about display fireworks. Consumer fireworks are what was just listed. So the Senate file also gives us, uh, as a city, or you as a city council, uh, may by ordinance or resolution prohibit or limit the use of consumer fireworks, display fireworks, or novelties. There's currently no mention of the ability to restrict the sale of fireworks. So it's our opinion, speaking with other municipalities, including our own city attorney, we don't have the ability to restrict the sale of fireworks in our community, but we do have the ability to restrict the use of the fireworks. 
So our current practice uh, under the law that uh, was uh, previous to May 9th, so the old law was May 8th, uh, in the city of Waterloo, we only allowed display fireworks. Uh, the permission must be obtained through a permit process. It allows uh, many of us within the city to look at it to make sure it meets all of our criteria. So that's police department, fire rescue, and city council, because you do uh, approve uh, display fireworks, and there's an approval on for tonight's agenda, I believe. We verify the, the licensing. The clerk's office looks at the insurance. The fire marshal or myself uh, will go out and take, excuse me, take a look at the site to make sure it's uh, what they say it's going to be. <coughs> excuse me. So that's the current, uh, the, the current law that we have on the books previous to May 9th when the mayor, or excuse me, when the governor signed this in. So some of the challenges that go with this is uh, there's lack of guidance from the state fire marshal's office as how they plan to issue licenses. I did talk to the state fire marshal today. And uh, they think they're going to be ready to start issuing licenses the week of May 22nd. Uh, we have lack of uh, local permit for retailers of fireworks to verify compliance with our codes and our safety standards. We think there's a lack of resources uh, to have additional enforcement activities. We do have some discrepancy in, within our talk within the city uh, group was a permanent versus temporary retailers. Obviously, we're under a compressed timeline. The governor signed the, into law on uh, May 9th, like I said, so less than a week ago. The state is not, not requiring background checks before they issue a permit. And speaking with the state fire marshal today, uh, they're certainly uh, not happy with that, but that's the way the law went through. They're going to try to readdress that after the administrative rules um, review will take place probably sometime in January. So to repeat, the state will not uh, require a background check before issuing a permit. And uh, the state is implementing the emergency rule. They don't have administrative uh, guidelines set for the, for the, uh, for the law, but uh, they're allowed to do it under an emergency rule, and they think they can have it done in two weeks. Something that like that usually takes four to six months. So um, challenges continue to state fire marshal. Uh, sent out a, uh, a communication on May 7th that basically said that we've determined each individual retail site will be required to acquire a retail seller license issued by the state fire marshal. Each fireworks retail site will also be required to pass an on-site inspection before the state fire marshal will issue a license. The state fire marshal will do those inspections. There's also some discrepancy in one of the references that the law uh, takes into account, which is NFPA 1124. This is another communication from the state fire marshal that uh, there's some issue if uh, tents are appropriate to be used to sell tents out of. Like I mentioned to you earlier, I spoke with him today. He's very confident that the AG, the Attorney General, uh, is confident that, uh, that it will be allowed. So what are the impacts for our community with this law? There are numerous. I just threw a couple in there. Increased calls for service. We think certainly police department will see a lot of calls. Fire and EMS, we're not sure. Um, Noise complaints will certainly be there. Pet owners, we've got to think of our pet owners in the community with the loud fireworks scaring them off. Uh, PTSD sufferers, um, the elderly, some people with seizures uh, apparently have some issues with fireworks being shot off. And then lasting impacts that we feel that some in the community may be injured with the use of fireworks. <clears throat> we do have a little bit... Uh, in our current uh, city ordinance, and Kelly can speak to this in a little bit, but uh, we do have 785 that restricts um, firecrackers or fireworks of any, of any character in any public park except <coughs> otherwise provided by this code. So we thought we'd give you three, uh, what I feel would be three options that we have to decide upon. Keep in mind that uh, the law goes, the law's already in effect, but really June 1st, there'll be people looking to sell fireworks in our community. 
So the first option there is to recognize the legislation as is. So the use of fireworks will be authorized as set out in the bill, and that includes the times uh, and the dates. So it'd be, for this year, it'd be from June 1st through July 8th. Fireworks would be able to be used within the community. And sales would be authorized as outlined in the bill. <coughs> So option one is what we call the free fall, free for all option. Option two, which would um, have local modifications to it. We certainly recognize the new legislation with some modifications, and this is allowed by state law that by ordinance reduce the days and or times that consumer fireworks work shall be used to June 30th through July 4th. And that's kind of what we're calling the July 4th weekend. If I remember right, July 4th is on a Tuesday. So June 30th would be that Friday. We're talking with the other uh, city's uh, fire chiefs and our city attorney. I think we're well within our rights to restrict uh, the dates that fireworks can be, uh, can be used. So we would need to uh, look at our current ordinances, uh, restructure those, and have them in place. And we'd probably need to do all that by... Uh, next Monday because we have no council meeting on the 29th option three would be uh, to totally restrict uh, the the use of fireworks in our community basically as it is now with the exception of fireworks are legally sold in our community so that would be no <coughs> excuse me no use of fireworks whatsoever uh, unless uh, under permit Just in conclusion, that we're talking with uh, our city clerk and city attorney that we feel that we'll need to incorporate and adopt by reference to this new state law. So in other words, what we have on the books currently, we're not sure would be restrictive enough because there's been a major law change in, in the state. Uh, we think we could modify existing ordinances that uh, reference the fireworks. Some of these may be minor in nature uh, obviously, we'll need to involve a lot of departments, planning, zoning, clerk's department, uh, PD, of course, the fire department, and code enforcement as well. As well. And we think this is going to be a work in progress, the, this first go around. So that's kind of what we threw together for you. And uh, we had the fire marshal with me today as well, and obviously Attorney Zellifer's here, as well as Kelly, to answer any questions you might have. Hey, uh, Chief, um, just two quick questions. One. Um, have you reached out to any other municipalities? And number two, um, the you know ha have other municipalities? If you did, taken a look at use on public property. For instance, if you're at Burns Park and you got children out there playing, for them for someone to come over and you know do things when children in reach has what you know what other places are doing. Sure. Well, to answer your first question, I've reached out to uh, all the larger cities uh, in the state, uh, their fire chiefs. I know uh, Attorney Zelfer has also reached out, and Kelly has as well. The, the majority of the cities have not decided exactly what they're doing. Uh, Davenport, Iowa City, Cedar Rapids, Dubuque have all indicated to me the direction is going to try to ban the use, uh, but that is not set. Uh, Marion, Iowa is, I think they're voting on it this week to restrict the time frame of when fireworks can be used. And they're looking at a June 24th through July 8th. But there again, that's, that hasn't been approved. Uh, we've been in touch with Cedar Falls. I've talked to their fire chief uh, a number of times. And uh, we're well aware of what their resolution is uh, that is before their council tonight. And it's my understanding that they would allow the use of fireworks on uh, private property, not on any public uh, property or any parks. So I think that would be at a minimum, we, if we want to use fireworks in this community, if you choose as a council to go that way, we need to make sure that we limit it, uh, that they won't be allowed in a, in a public park. <coughs> I mean, we don't want fireworks being used at a Friday Lou, for example. I think we need to think of that. Yes, sir. So, Chief, on uh, your, your first page here, the fees associated between 500 and 1,000, so those are for the sellers, correct? 
That would be paid to the state to issue the license to sell the product, okay. correct? And then you mentioned something about churches and a hundred dollar fee. What what was that? There is a wording in the law that uh, would allow a nonprofit, a church, Cub Scouts, if they showed the proper um, insurance certifications, the state gives them a deal, if you'll call it that. And I think the permit for them is $100. Oh, so then they could sell fireworks for a fundraiser or something like that? Correct, gotcha. yeah. Okay. And then your, your challenges, <clears throat> it looks like the bulk of your challenges have to do with the retailers, but then in your article it sounds like we don't have a lot of control over the retailers. The state does. We've just got more control over the use. Is that correct? Sort of. Okay. okay. Uh, so we cannot, as a city, ban the sale of fireworks, but we can we can control where the fireworks are sold right. through planning and zoning, for example. We can designate a, a community very close to Des Moines, I, I was told this morning, is going to restrict uh, the use or the sale of fireworks to just uh, commercial areas. So in other words, nothing in, in uh, private areas or residential areas, excuse me, residential. So we have the ability to control where they're sold. We just can't say we're not going to allow the sale of it. So that, I think that's more of a city staff decision on, on that. I think what's before council is if you as a city council want to allow the use of fireworks in the community because by the law we can restrict the use. Okay. Um, and then your one other page where you talk about the, uh, not having any uh, use of fireworks would be authorized as in the bill parentheses, no restriction on type of fireworks, dates or times or for use, but aren't there restrictions of type of fireworks, dates and use in the bill? Right, other than what's in, listed in the so bill. So you're talking so about in addition to that. Correct, yeah. So we're yeah. saying what the state put forward, we're saying carte blanche, we're good to go with it. Okay. Dates, times, and what they listed as commercial fireworks. Okay. That was in another tile there. Okay, was there, I mean, it, it kind of sounds like this has been going through the legislature, I think, for a couple of years, and it now got done, and it's now the cities are all scrambling to refute it from what you're saying. If all the you're indicating all the metropolitan areas, your understanding are, are coming out to prohibit. Is that my correct? understanding? Is they're going to try to restrict the use of fireworks in their community? Correct. Okay. I mean, it seems. Excuse me. It seems like there's little lack of communication or something there between the League of Cities and the legislature I mean I don't understand how it looks like we're going in two different directions I'm just curious your perspective I mean I guess I was just wondering about that yeah I can tell you what's talking to the state fire marshal today that his office certainly wasn't pleased with the timing of the bill as in it went in, into effect the day the governor signed it he was pushing for uh, a December start date and he didn't win out so um, we were somewhat going down the path. We thought the legislators were going to approve it last year, but it didn't get done. There was some talk this year that the governor was going to veto it. Uh, that didn't occur. And now this is kind of what we're, we're stuck with. And I think the biggest rub for me personally is the time frame of it. Uh, I mean, he signed into law May 9th. We had this date already set uh, for a work session a couple of weeks ago. It just doesn't give us a whole lot of time to think through all the problems that might occur. Sure. Well, I'm going back to what the mayor said. I mean, doesn't it seem like, not that we should do what they decide, but doesn't it seem like we and Cedar Falls and Evansdale, those three probably specifically ought to kind of all be on the same page to one degree or another? I mean, it seems like that would just create more problem rather than less if all you got to do is go across the street and the rules change. And I would think the public would be real confused. Yeah, I think it'd be a little rugged if one of those three communities uh, banned it all together and their neighboring community allowed it. Yeah. I would agree with that. Uh, if my opinion was asked of what option to go with, and it hasn't been, but I'll give it, uh, I would I say that- I was gonna that get to that. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't intended at anybody directly. Uh, I would say that we should uh, try to go with the modified use would be my recommendation and see how it goes. Um, and that would be from the June 30th to July 4th 
Uh, that would be my recommendation. And so the no fireworks during the winter? Because that, the, isn't there a time frame in there around the holidays, New yeah, Year's? It, yeah, it, so it's, uh, it's listed there as well. I don't know what slide it was here. But that is part of the modified? Right, and the okay. modification okay. would be, yeah, I'm sorry, it's not on that slide, but okay. we'd be fairly lenient in, in December. We don't, we don't see that as being a huge issue. Yeah, I wouldn't think. In this uh, climate. Chief, Thank Chief, you. Chief Trudeau. Um, <coughs> so in the modified version that you have here, it doesn't include um, um, New Year's Eve or that, but that would be part of what you're talking about with the modified version, correct? Including correct. New Year's correct. Eve. Correct. I okay. mean, I think we could, we could get a good feeling of how this uh, summer went, and we would have plenty of time to address the December uh, time frame by resolution or ordinance. Okay. And... Um, the uh, restricted area that you'd mentioned there, the current city ordinance, and maybe Kelly, you know, um, this is this just applies to parks, or does does it apply to all publicly owned property? That seven dash eight dash five. Yeah, it, it's my understanding. It's just public parks. Correct. Okay, so but this could. Um, uh, an option, a modified option, could include all publicly owned property, no use on any publicly Correct. owned property, yeah. which would include parks as yes, well. Sir. Yeah. And also, um, when they talk about fireworks, are they just referring to aerial fireworks? Or what about like cherry bombs, M80s, those kinds of loud bang firecrackers well they're not specifically prohibited in the law but they're also not specifically listed so the idea is that uh, an m80 wouldn't be allowed uh, my direction is uh, from people in the industry has been that the maximum amount in one firework could be 500 grams of product now I can't tell you exactly what 500 grams looks like but cherry bombs and M80s were a concern and the group that was opposing fireworks called that out in their letter to the governor that the law doesn't specifically prohibit those but there again it doesn't list them as one of those products that's deemed to be class one or class two consumer fireworks so I'm, I guess the end result is I would say it, it restricts them it. it could be clearer in the law but the clear in the state law, more more clear in the state law, clear, clear in the state, in law, state law, or correct. clear in our ordinance. Whatever. No, I'm talking be. about state law. State law could have certainly cleaned that up a little better, but and that is a concern in some in the uh, the opposition to the fireworks, is they specifically say the law doesn't um, prohibit M M80s or cherry bombs. So how would our city handle if we pass an ordinance that it modified? and we did not include those as um, uh, legal use or to be used legally within the city but then we got the sellers selling those within our city because they say they're legally authorized to sell them. Yeah, th that's a good question. I, I refer back to it's not listed in, in, the, uh, in the state law what's allowed to be sold. So, you know, maybe Fire Marshal Ferguson wants to try to answer that but I, I would, it's not a huge concern. I don't think that these, uh, um, these sellers are going to be looking to, to, uh, to sell that product. Okay, thanks. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, Chief, one of the things that I do know is, is even though there is not a, it, it's actually against the law to use fireworks on the 4th of July and such. I know it happens a lot in this community. So I guess my question is, is, is how often is it happening? Are there citations issued lots of times for individuals using fireworks and stuff within this community? Because I know it's happening. I think I'd let Chief Trelka answer that. Uh, we as a fire department do not get a whole lot of fireworks complaints. Those are generally rooted to uh, PD. Dan Trelka, Chief of Police, we show a vast amount of forgiveness around the holidays when it comes to fireworks. Uh, 
I don't have stats, but I'd be shocked if we issued a ticket in the past six years around 4th of July. Thank you. So, um, I'm hearing some option to local modification possibilities. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, Chief Trelor, uh, are you looking for suggestions from the council for the modified version, or are you putting something together with city staff, other city staff, or what's? I'll maybe defer to our city clerk. I mean, we've met on this issue two or three times, and I think we're all on the same page. We're just going to need to float a few ideas your way and see where we think that uh, we could get something passed. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to need to suspend the rules on Monday night, the 22nd, um, to get anything in place for June 1. So, uh, Kelly? I would, um, a little bit of what we talked about is there's just a couple of parts in our code that we'll probably need to tweak. Um, one is there's a specific definition of fireworks. So we'd probably want to incorporate what the state law sets out as what's legal for sale. Um, within the business license portion of the code, that's Title III, when it talks about um, peddlers and transient merchants, um, I'm going to recommend that we put something in there that spells out that you can't go door to door with firework sales just because of the zoning issues and the fact that we would need to know where the sale is going to take place within the city and have some restrictions on that sale. Um, and then what we'd also like to put to council is you've had three options kind of brought before you tonight. Um, what I think we'll do is next week on the agenda is put forth um, either two or three, kind of depending on what council's feelings are right now, um, resolutions with different options so that we have um, some clear direction from the city government on what's going to be allowed or not going to be allowed for um, use of fireworks within the city. Um, um. And then we also need to have um, within those resolutions recognition of the fact that yes the bill was passed into law and we acknowledge it we're working with it and we just need to kind of move forward from there. I think Pat did a good job of kind of outlining what some of the challenges are and you know when you get some significant changes like this but before you in a short amount of time the first go around is definitely going to be there's going to be a lot of trial and error and I think everybody's in the city staff is committed to kind of working together and working through those problems and trying to make accommodations for people who are wanting to sell fireworks within the city of Waterloo. And, and the state fire marshal, I'm repeating myself, but said they're probably going to be ready to go Monday the 22nd. So people will be calling their office to get licenses started. He's going to, or they are going to tell them to talk to us, whether it be <coughs> Kelly's office, my office, or planning and zoning, to say, can you put a fireworks tent at you know, Ridgeway and Laporte? And so it will be a planning and zoning issue to start with. Uh, so we need to be prepared for some of these phone calls starting the 22nd. I've received a few calls. I know our fire marshals uh, received a few as well, and probably some of you have. But uh, Pat Morrissey, Councilman Morrissey, I did uh, check with the fire marshal here, and uh, M80s and cherry bombs would be restricted under the Child Safety Act of 1966, and that's referenced in NFPA 1124. And that is the code uh, that the law does refer to. So there's a little bit more of a definitive answer for you. Okay. And so, yes. Mr. Mayor and, and Chief Treeler was wondering, and, and maybe Noel, um, w would, if these are going to be sold uh, by some type of zoning requirement, are, are they? Is it going to be acknowledged uh, that this type of business is like an adult business where it has to conform to overlay districts and that, such as like the payday lender ordinance, uh, where only certain places within the city is there authorization of sales to take place 
uh, as an example, I look at Church Row as an overlay district, and I, I know uh, planning and zoning has defeated um, full bars going in there uh, w as an overlay district, and I'm just wondering if that same kind of wording would apply or could apply with this. No. Fireworks overlay? <laughs> well, it'd be like an adult business uh, for overlay districts. Well, Anderson Community Planning Development Director, right now there is no such overlay district, so if that's something we wanted to look at in the future, we could. Um, right now, this would just be considered as another uh, retail type uh, temporary location. Uh, what we look at on those, uh, let's say for example, they want to go in someone's parking lot with a tent. Um, we have to look at the site. We have to make sure it's not uh, providing any uh, visibility triangle obstacles being located at the corner. Um, for traffic, we have to look at the amount of available parking on the hard surfacing that they have on that lot and if they have extra parking to give up for an additional business to be located on there. So essentially we're making sure that they're still in compliance with the zoning ordinance, um, but we don't specifically call out fireworks as any kind of a special use permit or anything like that at this time. That's something we'd have to look at maybe based on how it goes this year or something with, uh, with the other departments to see if we want to move ahead on something like that. Mr. Mayor? But, but no, we could. We can always look at that um, to okay. see what uh, what other communities may have done and what exactly we want to put into something like that. I mean, obviously, we did it with the uh, alcohol overlay ordinance, so we could do it with with additional ones if we had uh, justifiable reason to do that. I think, um, Chief, you the option two with some local modifications um, is that one. Given our situation, given the time frame, um, given the fact that the state has um, <coughs> pushed this through, is that one more closely related? And I also heard Councilman Morrissey indicate um, all public, all public properties. Um, where are you at? Yeah, that would that would be the recommendation if the council decided to go with option two which would be local modifications uh, and it sets the time frame for what I'm calling July 4th weekend. That would include a, a ban on all um, public property. Fireworks would not be allowed, including parks. Okay. That would be my preference. All public properties. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Uh, Chief Trevor uh, and, 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 and uh, Chief Trelka have, once these businesses would get set up, they would be able to sell year round. Three six, no, wouldn't they? No, the the no. fireworks are restricted. Let's just focus on the summer from uh, June one to July eighth. The law is very clear on that. So, there there is some talk or buzz within the fire service that this is going to lead to year round sale and use, but it's certainly not there right now. No. The law is clear. It's June one to July eighth for permanent structures. Temporary, I think, it's June thirteenth through July 8th. So very short time frame. Oh, do we know, do we have any information on when these set up, if there's any trouble around the locations where they're set up, Chief Troca? Are any of them set up yet? No, that'd be determined by the particular property they <laughs> plan to utilize. I mean, in other communities, though, have there has there been any history of problems associated with? Not that I'm aware of, okay. but that's something I'll check into because that's an intriguing question. Okay, thanks. I think when the when the state passed this law, they decided that the cities will just decide how to deal with it. Somewhat another unfunded mandate coming from the state. Yeah, no. Um, and I, and I think uh, as we talked, we don't know a whole lot about what's going to happen. This is new territory for all of us. But um, this time frame, this short window gives us an opportunity to kind of figure out exactly what's going on. If we take a look at, you know, if our personal injuries increase, you know, 1,700 percent or if damage, property damage increases. I mean, but this is new territory. So I think um, um, moving more closely to the option we put um, number two with some all public facilities um, may give us an opportunity to see exactly where we're at before we 
move too far right or too or too far left. Correct. And and as a fire department, we have a number of issues that aren't before you. I mean, we've got some concerns with storage, uh, transportation, that sort of thing. But uh, we didn't bring that to you. I mean, and obviously we're concerned with people getting injured using them as well. But uh, some say that those uh, injuries have been exaggerated. Uh, what I'm saying to you as a council and the mayor is I, I think kind of go middle of the road and say let's give her a shot here June 30th through July 4th and keep our fingers crossed and we'll do the best to keep our retailers in check and get out there and make sure that they're selling the proper product and go from there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Pat, have we had a chance to look at, like, I'm thinking specifically Missouri? In South Dakota, uh, as I travel to both those states, the fireworks businesses look like great businesses. They're well kept. They don't look like there are any issues like Councilman Morrissey seems to be concerned about. Uh, do we have any data on on that? Well, there's certainly work? a lot of literature out both <coughs> from both sides of you know the pro fireworks and the opposition. Mm -hmm. And you know, I would say generally speaking, the fireworks. Uh, setups in Missouri and Indiana there's a lot of big players Phantom Fireworks uh, they're fairly safe organizations and uh, my bigger concern is the, the retailers or the vendors that have no experience with fireworks it's going to be new to a lot of them as it is to us so that's a little bit more of my of my concern class C fireworks consumer fireworks are different than uh, display and the mass detonation is a little bit tougher with uh, consumer fireworks so there are some safety things uh, already written into the law because it restricts the size of the firework that can be used are there are there age limitations I didn't notice that anywhere 18 years of age okay. right. to so sell I'm not sure on the use 15, 15 to use 15 to use I'm not sure on the Thanks. use but it's 18 to sell so for the dealers they're responsibility would be to maintain their license basically just like a bar or anybody else that if it's a good business they want to make sure they're responsible in their sale of who they're selling it to and that type of thing in order to I, keep I would license. think so yeah, yeah. I would yeah. think so I'm, I'm not sure what the state has has planned for that but they do say as the as the fund builds they'll <coughs> give grants out to municipalities for education and enforcement <coughs> they, they claim that that's going to be coming down the pipe any other questions? <coughs> oh, yeah. All right. Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Let's call our Human Resources Committee to order. Madam Clerk, would you read the roll, please? Mr. Welber? Here. Mr. Jacobs? Mr. Morrissey? Here. Mr. Powers? Here. Mr. Lind? Mr. Amos? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Motion for the agenda is proposed. Second. We have a motion and a second on the agenda. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Oh, same sign, that motion passes. Someone want to take either one or both of them today, if you like? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Uh, okay. Number one is a request by fire chief to initiate civil service process for fire recruit. And number two is a request from chief of fire services for authorization to appoint one fire recruit from the civil service list. Second. We have a motion and a second on the two requests. Any questions in regards to either one of those? Chief, this is a backfill position, correct? It, correct. We have a retirement. Marty Freshwater is uh, retired as of May 17th, so this Wednesday. Thank you. To fill that opening. Any other questions? Hearing none, we need a roll call, please. 
Mr. Weber? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Okay, the motion is passed, both of them. Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, motion to second on adjournment. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. Let's call our Finance Committee to order. Madam Clerk, would you read the roll, please? Mr. Jacobs? Here. Mr. Powers? Here. Mr. Welber? Here. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval of the agenda and approval of the minutes of May 8, 2017, as proposed. Second. We have a motion and a second on the agenda and minutes. Questions of either of those? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion passes. Under new business, we have one travel request today. Mr. Chairman, I'll take the travel request today. We have a request for Tom Powers Ward 1, Council Member 10, the Cedar Valley Coalition meeting in Washington, D.C., June 13th through the 14th, 2017, amount not to exceed $350. And I'll second that. Any discussion on that? I will uh, be abstaining because that's my name on there. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so I understand. Um, I understand Councilman Powers is paying for all the other expenses of the trip, and this is the only thing that really is being covered in this request is the registration fee on this. So, okay. Other than that, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion passes. Prios. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll take those. Preauthorization to expend over a thousand dollars for the airport. The amount. An estimated shipping and handling is sixteen thousand dollars, and this expenditure is additional advertising to continue marketing the airport. Center of the Arts amount is estimated shipping and handling of two thousand dollars. Expenditure the annual preventative maintenance contract seven one seventeen oh six two through oh six thirty eighteen for the powered mo uh, mobile shelving equipment that houses the art collection at the center. Central Garage, the amount estimated shipping and handling $1,441.73. That expenditure is to replace the radiator on sanitation truck number 903. Culture and Arts, amount uh, estimated shipping and handling at $2,950. That expenditure is uh, 50 replacement pole banners for River Loop Expo Plaza and River Loop Amphitheater. Culture and Arts again, the amount estimated shipping handling $2,647. I think I just read that one. $2,647.50. Expenditures for 37.5 feet steel galvanized interlocking crowd control barricades and storage cart. For the engineering department, the amount estimated shipping handling of $3,010 plus. $150 for shipping handling. That expenditure is storm drain inlet labels and adhesives. Engineering, the amount estimated shipping handling $3,000 expenditure. Condition data processing and summary uh, pavement management services. Cart graph process support from ISU Institute for Transportation. These are services, the amount and estimated shipping and handling is sixteen thousand six eighty zero six or six cents. Uh, expenditures replacement trees for ash tree removed at Burns Park. These are services, the amount estimated shipping and handling three thousand one hundred dollars. Expenditure is certified playground mulch surfacing. These are services. Amount estimated shipping and handling of $2,638.05. 
This expenditure is replacement of clutch, pilot bearing, and pilot uh, bearing housing for a forestry chipper. The mayor estimated cost of $4,792.20, and that expenditure is FY17 Metro Coalition dues. Police, uh, the amount estimated shipping handling with $1,000 expenditure for one day training and mentoring violence pre prevention. The sewer department, the amount estimated $51,250 expenditures purchase. Replace boiler, boiler number two for digester complex. Sewer department again, the amount for estimated shipping handling of $16,911.92. That expenditure and amendment for existing contract for removal replacement of boiler number two for the digester complex, $8,000. $334.98 remaining on the original contract for repairs. And the sewer again estimated shipping or estimated cost of $5,890.47. That expenditure repairs parts and labor for damages to a flusher truck. Traffic operations, the amount estimated $8,000. Expenditure purchase and installation of wood poles for span wire system at the intersection of Progress and Green Hill Avenue. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on all the pre -offs. Any questions or discussion? Councilman Wilford, um, on the second pre auth for Culture and Arts, I think the shipping was left off in the amount of $489. So if we could add that, I would appreciate it. What, what was that now? It's shipping on the second pre auth for Culture and Arts. The oh. amount says it's $2,647.50 okay. for the galvanized interlocking barricades. That should also have shipping of $489 if you could approve that as well. Okay. I would make that amendment to, or agree to that amendment of uh, 400 and whatever the amount is, $89 for shipping, okay? Second. And a second on that. Any other discussion, any of those items? Mr. Chairman, Mr. just a Morrissey. quick question for clarification. Center for the Arts is in the second one, and then we have Cultural and Arts, and Cultural and Arts, two times, are, are they the same? Is Center for the Arts the same as Cultural and the Arts? Yeah. Oh, okay, thanks. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The pre are approved. There are no budget light item amendments today, but we do have the bills. The bills are $2,580,525.32. That's 2, 580,525.32. Motion a second on the bills payment. Questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Bills are paid. Chairman, I move for adjournment. Uh, second. Motion to second on adjournment. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.
<laughs> uh, good evening, everyone. It's time to get this meeting started. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you please read the roll? Mr. Jacobs? Here. Mr. Morrissey? Here. Mr. Powers? Here. Mr. Lind? Here. Mr. Amos? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Welper? Here. All right, uh, now is our time for our moment of silence. Um, you have the option of standing or sitting. If you would please join me. Moment of silence. Thank you. This evening's pledge will be read by Ron Welper, Mayor Pro Tem, and Ward, Ward 5 Council Member. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda as proposed and also the approval of the minutes May 8th, 2017, regular session as proposed. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We have an agenda in minutes. Uh, now it's time for oral presentations. Uh, your opportunity to share your thoughts and your concerns uh, with the council and mayor. Uh, first, we have uh, Sue Beach um, to come and uh, talk to us about community bicycling. And uh, Sue, also congratulations on five years with Blue Zones as well. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Mayor and Council. Um, I'm here tonight representing the Blue Zones Project to talk a little bit about how uh, we as a community are so fortunate to have Blue Zones in, in our community and in Waterloo because it really is here for us all. And uh, bicycling, Blue Zones Project suggests that if we get out and move naturally, we're all gonna feel better. And what better way to, to do that than bicycling? Um, so May is bicycling month. And then of course they break it down into this week is bicycling week. But those of us that maybe can only do one day, we break it down a little farther and have bicycling to work day on May 19th. So I'm here today to encourage everyone to please um, bicycle to work. If you live too far away, that's fine. Grab a friend, throw your bicycle in the back of your car and meet someplace where you guys can go together to work. Um, we also have a great opportunity because Waterloo Bicycle Works rent bi rents bicycles. So I'm giving lots of options because really there's no way that you shouldn't be able to find a bicycle to at least try it. So I just wanted to share with you a little bit of history of, of Bike to Work Day. Um, the thing about biking to work, it's not just an opportunity to get out and get healthy. It has a massive effect on every part of your day. Getting out and biking to work requires you to get up a little earlier, spend some time waking, it, waking up before you head out the door, and planning for the extra time it's going to take you to bike on your way to your destination. All of this will ensure that you are bright-eyed and bushy-tailed when you get to the office, invigorated by your ride and ready to face the day with bright new perspective. <laughs> There's real data that shows that if you get up and you can move naturally, do a little bit of exercise, that you're going to have a better productive day as well. So um, I encourage Waterloo citizens, I encourage worksite leaders to encourage your, your people, your employees to please um, take advantage of this great opportunity. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And um, council <clears throat> members, you have a little poster you can share and I'll send it to the mayor electronically too to... Uh, spread the good word to encourage others to to bicycle on friday and, uh, i rode my bike to work today and my skateboard brothers told me i need to skateboard one day to work too. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right thank you sue um we also have uh al manning that's here to address the council al are you here um but i think that his concern was in relation to the video surveillance on number five so if he makes it in time I will adhere to that um, and if anyone else that would like to um, share your thoughts concerns appreciation uh, for the council <laughs> please come on up boy that's a hard act to follow David Dryer 3145 West 4th Street uh, Mr. Mayor we asked the questions that we asked 
so that the public knows the answer. Not meet somebody in the hall or meet somebody in their office or whatever. I have asked before, what, is, what does the tree removal program cost the taxpayers? Removal, replacement, stump grinding, and I see another last week $16,680 for Burns Park. So I'd like an answer to that question sometime, somewhere, publicly. Uh, number two, how much does, how much equipment does the city own and how much do we have, have we replaced in the last 12 months? What happens to the old equipment? I have asked this question in the past and have gotten no answer. Uh, privately or publicly to date. Can we expect an answer? Transparency is what we always hear about. So, uh, and that refers to number two on the public uh, uh, portion of the, of the council meeting. City equipment, how much we own. How much do we own and how much do we share between departments? And you can't you can you really you really think that can be answered right now? I do not. I would like it answered publicly though. So everybody that's watching the T V tonight can get that answer so they understand how much equipment the city owns, how much we maintain, etc. Is it possible to work together to come up with this answer? because I don't necessarily know right here, because, I mean, we have everything from boats to cars to lawnmowers to tractors to rakes to ice melt that goes on the ground to, there's a lot that the city possesses. And to do a study like that, I assume that would be uh, an astronomical amount of time. So are there specific areas that we can work together, you and I, to get you the answers that you would like to have? If we sat down, you could say, how many cars do you have? Or how many is in the motor pool? Or, I mean, but I can't, you know. I, I can work that up. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and then uh, how much does the tree removal program cost us? Do you have that number on your paw? Paul Hudding, Leisure Services Director. I don't have the number right with me. I'd have to clarify that as well. Um, the question would be what tree removal? Is it the ash tree program? Because we do have specific uh, funding that we've asked for for that, or is it our entire forestry <coughs> operation? Depending no, on what you want, we, can, we have numbers. I don't have them all in my head at this moment. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir just the ash tree program okay because we put in a lot of money to trees we have replacement removal stumps and all of that and i will wait for an answer and then i will share that later in an article in the paper or whatever if i need to thank you all right thank you <coughs> forest dillamoot 1725 huntington road after last week's council meeting and the bonding for the Mediacom update, I went home and shared that with my wife. Her and I, being on a fixed income several years ago, sat down and looked at where our money was going and where we thought we wanted to spend money and not spend money. We chose to opt out of Mediacom. We did not feel we were getting our money's worth and we could use it better elsewhere. When I told her that we were going to, as taxpayers, bond to update Mediacom, she says, why? We'd opted out because we didn't want to. There are many people, many seniors that are opting out of Mediacom. And now we're going to be asked to update the Mediacom system because the city chose to spend that money rather than bank it for updates. So not only do we pay it, we pay interest, I assume, for 15 years. That's how we normally pay bonds. So her and I and others like us will now pay interest on this money. And uh, I, I think, the, she asked me why we did this. And I said, I think we did this to avoid the 810 levy. If we spend this money and bond for it, we don't have to pay it out of the 810 levy. If we hired a firefighter or a policeman or whatever we did with this money, it no longer goes on the 810 levy. And I think this is creative bookkeeping to further burden 
the taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you. Did we give money to MediaCom last week? <laughs> Bob, we didn't give any money to MediaCom last week. Upgrading our, our studio. That was upgrading the public access studio because we've been having problems with people being able to see. Um, and yes, it's probably shown on Mediacom, but we also take the video feeds and we place that on the internet and the web as well on our website. So it wasn't like, here, Mediacom, here's some money. This was because we have a studio and a system that is so outdated that it doesn't even send a clear signal to the homes that receive it or to the video recordings that we send out that people are able able to look at. So we didn't give Mediacom like cash money. That studio stays here. No, but you're spending money of the peoples who do not have it and do not get it. My point is still valid. We do not have Mediacom. We don't get it. We've got a cable. We got an antenna on the roof. Is there anyone else? Hi, good evening. Uh, Josh Wilson, <coughs> formerly of Waterloo, uh, now reside at uh, 525 uh, Southeast Prairie Park Lane in Waukee. Uh, two quick points I wanted to make. I'm only here today, Mr. Mayor, because I saw on Facebook this morning that you did bike to work, and I wanted to make sure that you did make it to City Hall uh, safely, so I'm glad to see that. Um, second of all, it's been in the papers. Um, and it even reached down in Des Moines. I'm extremely thrilled. I was always a proponent when I lived here in Waterloo. I'm really thrilled to see the Lou Henry Hoover Sculpture Park uh, finally come to life. Uh, so congratulations to everyone that was involved with uh, that project. I know Mary Potter and some others over in the Neighborhood Association over their church row have worked hard on that. So I think that's something we need to be proud of. You know, we've only had so many first ladies. She was born right here in Waterloo. So uh, it's always good to publicize that. And then finally, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention this while I was in town. Um, I know you guys will be discussing the fireworks legislation that was recently passed. Um, I was at the Capitol when that bill was passed. They did a lot of work on it, went through a lot of committees and a lot of debate. Uh, and uh, so I hope that you guys will um, maybe follow Cedar Falls path uh, and ban it on public property, uh, but allow those citizens to exercise their new rights to, to do it on their own property here in Waterloo. So again, I'm glad you made it to City Hall. It's good to see everybody and thank you very much. All right, thank you, Josh. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor, receive and file oral comments. Second. A motion been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Oral comments have been filed. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda. That's items one through six. And within that are the bills payment. Bills payment this week. $2,580,525.32. That's 2, 580, 525.32. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Council, any questions in the consent agenda? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to ask that item 1B1A be taken out of the consent agenda and made an item all by itself. 1B1A. Yes, sir. Travel request. I mean, Mr. Lane, did you have a question for me, too? I'll wait for this. Okay. I mean, <coughs> I was going to have to say. All right, so we will vote on the... We've never done that before. Never done that before. Never, ever done that before. Yeah, we had it normally. We did it a couple weeks ago to talk about the bonds. Not what is it, Steve? Well, second. The following items will be acted upon by voice vote on a single motion without a separate discussion unless someone from council or public requests that a specific item be considered separately. Right, and in order to amend how it's listed on the agenda, you guys need to do a vote to pull that off consent and then consider that separately. Right. 
Second. We did that a couple weeks ago when we were talking about the bond issue. Yeah, either way. Well, for the record, we have consistently taken items off the consent agenda by request by council, period. Yeah, and we have not moved Maybe it Maybe the city attorney would like to weigh in on that. Yeah, we haven't moved it to a regular council okay. item. Have you we guys just, done that in the We past? voted on the rest. We voted on the rest. You Without vote. a motion? Did we just do I that? Thought, I thought there was just, wasn't that just a motion? We can't hear back in the corner. Dave Zella for city attorney. Uh, who made the motion? I did. Yeah, okay, and it was seconded, correct? Correct. Yeah. To remove the one, the one item off the consent agenda and move it for a regular vote on its own? Correct. Right. Yeah, we've yeah. done that off, often, and right. it's, it's yeah. standard procedure. Yeah. It's allowed. We don't need to vote on it. I didn't think so. Yeah, because we're, we're, we're still, we're still, it's still in the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. It's just voted on separately. Separately. Yeah, yeah. just want to have a conversation right. about right. so right. the rest of the agenda. Sure. We can't hear I will <coughs> uh, I will err on the side of tradition, but um we normally have we're not taking it out of consent agenda. We're just voting on it separately. 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 So you're having a separate vote within the consent agenda. Is that what I'm understanding? On, on I just need to be clear for the record what we're doing. Yeah, we're just voting on that item separately. Okay. <coughs> so. So we're doing the consent agenda vote, and then you're voting on the travel request. Yeah. 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 Okay. I just want to be clear. <coughs> so we clear on that. I believe so. Yeah. All right, uh, Madam Clerk. <coughs> Uh, and this is on the other items we're voting on the travel request second. <coughs> Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. All right. So now 1B1A. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Morrissey? I'd like to make a motion to approve the travel request of Tom Powers to attend Cedar Valley Coalition meeting. Uh, amount not to exceed three hundred fifty dollars. Second. The motion has been made with a second. Discussion. So I guess my question would be: In the ten years I've been on City Council, we've never paid to send a City Council member to uh, on a coalition trip. The only time I'm ever aware that a City Council member went on a coalition trip was when I went the first year I was on the Council, and I paid for that out of my own pocket. Um, you know, I think I've been pretty consistent over the last few years that we've had money in the city council fund, um, but it seems to me one of the responsibilities of being on the city council is to take it upon ourselves if we want to do some of these things to pay for it out of our own pocket. Um, I think a lot of the things that uh, we do are, are learning opportunities, but I don't think it's uh, necessarily the responsibility of the taxpayer to pay for that. I think that, you know, during the budget hearing, I attempted to cut our travel request because I do think that the council and the mayor need to lead by example and when we're asking department heads to do whatever they can do to cut their expenses and I'm assuming the reason that we're approving to spend this is that there must be money left in the fund. I mean, I don't know how we ever came up with that kind of a number. But I guess I just don't understand the, the purpose of it, so that was the reason why I wanted to discuss it. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Uh, Jacobs. Just a couple comments. Uh, first of all, I, the first thing I looked at was, is there money in the fund? Um, because before we had a trail request, I um, was first a council uh, member, and well, we didn't have the funds. And so this time, there are actually the funds available uh, for this, but I guess, I would like to, to maybe find out a little bit more about the trip and what it can do for Waterloo. And does it open any doors for us? Uh, does it open up, give us any more possibilities for grants or anything for anything in the city? And if, if it does, I think that's what we should talk about. Um, 
For those that for those that don't know, um, the the uh, local municipalities, Waterloo and Cedar Falls, um, Intercog, and some other entities uh, take a coalition trip to Washington D.C. to talk to our uh, federal legislators uh, to set up meetings to talk about programs, whether it's bridge construction, whether it is. Um, uh, uh, waste management systems, whether it's streets, whether it's roads, whether it's silos and smokestacks. But we spend the entire year planning this trip and what we're going to present to our federal legislators. They come over, they spend time, they ask us questions. And if there are grants, if there are um, federal dollars, if there are connections on dealing with the EPA for us to be able to have greater communication, all of those types of meetings are held. Um, during that time so it is an outreach meeting so that they don't forget about who we are that they continue to know uh, the priorities of their local communities um, other other cities also take um, trips as well but this is our opportunity for us to go out as the um, Cedar Valley Alliance um, uh, the we meet at intercom and there there are a group of folks that are Waterloo Community Schools are involved uh, Cedar Falls and uh, a bunch of leadership in the community that uh, do outreach to our um, local, I mean our local uh, federal folks. So that's kind of where that, and I don't know how long have we been going? Anyone, anyone know how many years? It's at uh, least 15. At least 15 to 20. Uh, so that's, that's primarily what the trip is about seeing where we can find federal dollars and to make them aware of our efforts locally. Well, and again, Mr. Mayor, for the record, excuse me, I'm sorry, for the record, uh, this has nothing to do with Councilman Powers. Uh, it just has to do with the fact that because we've got money in the budget doesn't mean we need to spend it. You know, we've got that mentality with some folks on the council that it's in the budget, so therefore we've got to spend it. Wouldn't it be nice to maybe have a little money left over? Um, you know, I always like to talk about Mary Smith on Wilson Avenue, and I'm pretty sure if there was money there at the end of the year, she could find a use for it for next year, and I'd really like to see us take a look at doing that. Now, if there's something else going on here that I'm, I'm missing, I'm certainly open to uh, somebody explaining that to me. But otherwise, I, we already send considerably more bodies than Cedar Falls or Intercog or anybody else as a rule. Cedar Falls does not have its mayor go. They have, I believe, a couple of department heads, and that's it. Cedar Falls, um, I, I, was, I had cocktails with <laughs> on and we, we talked. And he presented he presented last year as well. Okay, so well, he's, not, he's a new mayor, but Mayor Cruz uh, consistently did not go. I think if you look at the record, he may have gone on occasion. But uh, and again, this not necessarily having anything to do with the mayors. Um, right. But I don't I don't understand the purpose of now we're going to start having council members go and it just didn't make any sense to me. And I think we ought to keep that money in the budget and maybe we could cut the budget by that much next year. Mr. Please. Mayor, uh, Mr. Morris. Well. Um, a budget is set up uh, for uh, paying our bills and for meeting the needs of the services and uh, the services being provided by the employees. And in this particular budget, that money was set up to do something and um, to do something for the betterment of Waterloo. And in this particular case, we have a request from one of our uh, fellow council members to do something for the benefit of of Waterloo, Iowa, who he uh, serves in his position as Council Ward 1. Uh, and my understanding is Councilman Powers is going to pay for the bigger share of this out of his own money, and he's asking for this much um, uh, to defray some of the cost of going there. And um, uh, Councilman Powers brings and has brought to this council a particular skill set that benefits the city of Waterloo and benefits uh, information given to the council on issues uh, that I think that is part of why he's going and hopefully will approve his his going to Washington DC for with his coalition so I am very happy to support this and uh, I look for good information being brought back by uh, Councilman Powers Mayor. Yes, sir. I promised a taxpayer I'd read this email. 
He said, I've been on several of these DC trips. There are nothing but photo ops and cocktail parties. Why can't the Cedar Valley Coalition meet with Senator Grassley, Ernst, Congressman Bloom, while they are in Iowa, like they are every weekend and on many weeks out of the year when they're on recess? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Mr. Miller, one, just one final comment. I uh, have family and I have friends that work for some pretty big time companies and some pretty small companies, but without exception, the private sector is cutting their travel expense. They're doing more with uh, video conferencing and they're traveling considerably less. And I think that, you know, local government needs to pay attention to that and, uh, and govern themselves accordingly. <coughs> Council, any other discussion? This is the consent agenda. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, I, I'm looking at this $350 here, and I understand what um, Councilman Schmidt is saying about cutting things and how we need to be aware of our budget and all those things. But I also look at this $350 that uh, Councilman Powers is looking at and requesting as an investment in the future of Waterloo, because I firmly believe, with his background and knowledge, he has something that will, I guess, allow for individuals to understand that what our community is doing is, is trying to grow our community, trying to do things from a standpoint of improving the community. And that's why when I look at this, this $350, I look at it as something that is going to support and benefit our community in the long run. So I can't help but support this. Well, we've had some conversation. This consent agenda. Mr. Mayor. Public input. Yes, sir. I would <clears throat> just like to make a comment that I appreciate the support. I appreciate the conversation of, support, of lowering tax dollars three, by $350. Um, and uh, I will still do this. I go there to D.C. I know where these different offices are. I disagree. Uh, uh, to some extent on the email that was written uh, on a person I don't know who it was but I've been on those meetings uh, and paid for them myself in the past as well and it is more than just meeting with four or five legislators from the federal level there are agencies that are involved in this the federal agencies that we have that opportunity this is a different type of a year out there uh, Congress or Washington, D.C. is pretty much uh, 60 square miles of pure chaos. And uh, we can uh, go, I go there often. I have the opportunity to go to appropriators. I can have an opportunity to go to a hearing possibly uh, that's, you know, potentially bring back information like that because I do on my day job travel out there on a fair amount. But uh, at this point, I would just ask that this be just completely withdrawn and I'll pay the whole bill. But I, I, w I do think that there's a misconception or a misperception of what really happens out there, especially now with the pure chaos that goes on out there. All right, so he would like this uh, withdrawn, what do we do? If that's a motion, I'll second it. I don't think it needs to be a motion. He withdrew it from the agenda. Let's, let let let's let the clerk. If this is, we dropped it. There's no comment on this. Thank you. Um, if you want to pull it off, we could do a motion in a second to withdraw it. And no, we don't normally withdraw in the middle of the meeting. <laughs> Is that well, what you would like? <coughs> however, the chair decides to do it. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm not here to cause difficulty. I think it's important that I have the opportunity to go. I'm willing to pay for it. Um, um, the hotel, flight, food, all of that, and $350 was a small ask, I thought. Um, but, um, and I'll still do it when I go out there. I'll still, I mean, I have, I know a whole host of 
lobbyists that work in a whole different arenas that can be beneficial. And, and I will tell you honestly, to everybody in the city and community, I'll still have those conversations. $350 isn't going to hurt, wound me at all. So however we do this to remove it, I will support it. I will, uh, or if it's got to go through the process of a vote, I can still write a check. Yeah, we just, <laughs> uh, if it is, if it is to, if it is to withdraw it, then we would need a motion to withdraw. Mr. Mayor, you know, we were just having a conversation about this. I don't, I don't think you know, it was too bad. I don't know why we just, uh, can't just bring it to a vote. Agreed. So, Mr. Mayor, uh, yes, Councilman Jacobs' uh, vote regarding which? The $350. The $350. Oh, the, 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 the withdrawal or the $350? Uh, the $350. Oh. So, I assume you're calling the question, and we go ahead and move forward. I would like us just to move, vote on this and move on. We have, in my opinion, uh, other things to deal with tonight. I think we should just move forward. But what about the, Mr. Sorry. Mayor, what about the motion in the second? All right, so we have a motion to withdraw the, the request, floor. right? Is that, yeah, is so that we what we're a, voting on? We have a motion on the floor to remove the item. If it was brought up by Mr. Powers, seconded by Mr. Schmidt. If that is to stand, we can take a vote on it. If it is to be, if that's to be withdrawn, then Mr. Powers would be yours to withdraw. Say that again. We either need to vote or take the motion off the table. <coughs> we need to vote on the removing the item so or take that motion off the table and vote so on approving the item. So the motion that's on right now is to remove the motion. Withdraw. To wi withdraw the motion, correct? Correct. Correct. Mr. Powers. Sorry about the confusion. Uh, no, it's okay. So where I have it right now is that we've got a motion and second by Powers to withdraw the travel request. All right. So motion, motion, uh, Madam Clerk, roll call vote. On withdrawing the travel request. Um, Mr. Morrissey? No. Mr. Powers? Yes. I, yes. I, Mr. Mayor, just point out, I don't know if Mr. Powers can vote on a motion regarding itself. Oh, I'll abstain. <laughs> Let's just move on. <laughs> I, yeah. I made the motion, so I thought I should vote. So he made the motion to we withdraw his name. I abstain. <laughs> so we got uh, <coughs> Morrissey, no powers, yes. Mr. Lin oh, You're voting for him. Mr. Powers, what's your vote? Yes. Yes, okay. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? No. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? No. Mr. Jacobs? No. Unbelievable. Four, so now we go back to the original motion, and that is for the $350 to go. Um, okay. Madam Clerk? So, for approval of the travel request. Um, Mr. Powers? No. Wait. I'll abstain from this. Mr. Lind? No. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? No. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. All right, so $350. All right. The um, public hearings, uh, number two is canceled due to lack of bids, right? All right, could someone take number three, please? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Item number three is a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing. And as for the purchase of one salt brine blender with automated truck <coughs> fill for the street department. Second. The motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this item? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I forgot to go back and reference um, uh, Mr. 
the July 8th um, Skate Park Music and Arts Festival. We have some folks here. I think, Brian, where you at? So, uh, yeah, no comment, because we've already <laughs> moved on, but uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Um, Hudding. Uh, Hudding. I just want to thank this group for stepping forward to help fund the skate park and we're we don't know exactly where we are because we're working with the federal government Tom maybe you can help us with that but we're trying to get a FEMA grant um, and but they've offered to, to step up and do a benefit concert and help raise money all right thank you fellas thank you If you want to slip away at this time, you're more than welcome. But if you want to stay and have the best fun of your life, then stick around at this council. <laughs> yeah, you got to bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't remember it at the time. Stick around, man. All right. It's going to get better. Sometimes I wish I could just sit back there and take a seat, too. <laughs> All right, we had a motion and second. The hearing is open for the salt briner. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this item? Come on down. What's that, Joe? Come on down. Am I going to win a million dollars? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. Uh, I thought this came up on another agenda a week or two or three ago. So is this a second salt? Uh, blender uh, or how many of these do we need and how old how are the old ones uh, being disposed of there was no bids right there was not was no seven and three sandy Greco interim public works director um our old salt brine maker was homemade it is all corroded uh, it does not work anymore so what was on the agenda a couple weeks ago was just to set the date of hearing and opening of bids. Okay. So we went out for bids for a new one. And the other one, the old one is so bad it'll be scrapped. I understand that. I just wondered, seeing it a couple weeks ago, whether, Mr. Mayor, whether it was that we were needing more than one or, you know, was this the first one, second one, or whatever. Thank no, you. No, right. this will be the first. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else that has questions about this item? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to close the hearing and receive and file oral comments. Second. A motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Hearing is now closed. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution, confirm approval of plans, specification, form of contract, etc. Second. second. A motion has been made with the second. Council, any discussion? <coughs> Madam Clerk? Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Wupper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Marcy? Yes. All right, that item carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution authorizing to proceed. Second. second. The motion has been made with the second council. Madam Clerk? Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Wupper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Marcy? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. All right, that item carries. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to receive, file, and instruct the city clerk to read bids. Second. The motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, the estimate for this purchase was $55,000. We had one bidder, was Henderson Products of Manchester, Iowa, and their bid amount was $52,943. Did you say homemade? <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second to kind of register that. All right, um, Mr. Schmidt. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution in approving the award of contract with Henderson, Henderson Products of Manchester, Iowa, in the amount of $52,943 for the purchase of one salt brine blender with automated truck fill for the street department and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Uh, Madam Clerk. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Wupper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. All right, that item carries. Number four, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution approving a request by Crossroads Realty LLC for the preliminary plat 
of Crossroads Plat Number 11, a five-lot commercial subdivision located adjacent to 2060 Crossroads Boulevard. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Any questions about this item? David Drive, 3145 West 4th Street. Um, I, I don't understand building another strip mall, especially at the crossroads. Is this an attempt? And why do we keep crucifying the mall? If you have TIF available for the, to make this happen, uh, why don't we give some of that TIF to the mall so they can survive? Because if they don't survive, later on down the road it's going to get tore down at taxpayer expense and sell it to someone for a dollar. Um, Mr. Anderson, can you answer the part if this is in a TIF? <coughs> Uh, if this is in the TIF district. Noel Anderson, Community and Planning and Development mall, Director. And if the mall is owned by a private or public, or if it's owned by the city, or if it's private? Sure. Yes, it is uh, located within the Crossroads TIF area. Um, this is actually a zoning action to split off five lots. The request is by the ownership of the mall. So if anyone's hurting the mall, they'd be hurting themselves. The uh, lots to be split off would be the Tires Plus building, the Applebee's building, and the Sears Automotive building, and then two empty lot areas for them to sell. I assume they're selling all the lots to make some profits to turn back into uh, investment back into the mall and to create some more um, activity in the area. But as a request by the owners of the Crossroads Mall. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, any other questions? Madam Clerk. Mr. Schmidt. Yes. Mr. Weber. Yes. Mr. Jacobs. Yes. Mr. Morrissey. Yes. Mr. Good. Mr. Powers. Yes. Mr. Lind. Yes. Mr. Amos. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, number five. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution establishing minimum technological standards for installation and maintenance of a video surveillance system as required by Waterloo Municipal Code, Title V, Chapter 4. Second. That motion has been made with the second. Um, Chief, we had uh, conversations about this in the past. Can you give a brief overview for those that may not have caught it? And while you're doing that, I need to step out. Dan Trelka, Chief of Police. Uh, this actually goes hand in hand with the ordinance you're going to consider here in a bit. This simply establishes the uh, technic technological thresholds for the equipment we would like businesses to utilize. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, yes, Mr. Mayor. I just have a quick procedural question. Why wouldn't this be in the ordinance? Why would we? Why would we be doing this by resolution? Kelly, maybe, or maybe the chief would tell me. The technology changes so rapidly. The ordinance probably. Uh, the technology will probably change before the ordinance needs to be changed. So we can, so we can just it, simply right? change it with okay. a resolution when it changes. Thanks. Okay. Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, we got to be here. You have to be here, too. Uh, uh, oh, you're here, Brian. I got my eye on you. Um, if you want to, anyone want to address this? We, we've had conversations about this, um, but anyone with some thoughts or concerns or want to talk about this item? I, uh, I plan on spending my five minutes on the ordinance itself. So All right, then okay. come on down. You want me to speak on the ordinance right now? You're the next contestant. <laughs> he was um, wondering if you should wait until yeah, the Yeah, we, we have it on the, um, yeah. what's the best time, right? It was on the, the it was on the, uh, it was on for number five. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, with regards to the convenience store, right? Right. right but okay. I was planning on speaking on the ordinance itself. I didn't know there was going to be a resolution about the technological standards. 
but well, I can show you yeah, it when we can wait. Can. If you vote down the ordinance, the resolution will, uh, will be moved anyway. I'll just wait till I can. That's okay. okay, that's fine. All right, sorry about the confusion. We'll I rode my bike today. <laughs> Any other questions on number five or comments, Council? <laughs> Madam Clerk? Mr. Welford? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? No. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. All right, that item carries. Could someone take six and seven, please? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Lynn? Number six is a resolution. I moved to adopt a resolution approving the award of contract to Peterson Contractors, Inc. of Rhinebeck, Iowa, in the amount of $221,066, and approving the contract bonds and certificate of insurance for the fiscal year 2017 flood control gatewell repairs contract number 918, and authorize Mayor and City Clerk to execute said documents. And I move to approve final quantity adjustments for net decrease of $734.20 for the fiscal year 2017 leisure services sanitary sewer extension contract 925 <coughs> and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Uh, any questions on six and seven? Madam Clerk. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. All right, those items carry. Eight and nine, please. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Schmidt. Item number eight is adopting a resolution approving completion of project and recommendation of acceptance of work for work performed by Benton Sand and Gravel, Inc. of Waterloo, Iowa, at a total cost of $41,640.80 for the fiscal year 2017 leisure service sanitary sewer extension, contract number 925 and receive and file two year maintenance bond. And item number nine is adopting a resolution authorizing traffic operations department to place temporary yield signs on Lawn Hill Street and Drexel Street due to reconstruction on Fletcher Avenue. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Any questions on these two items? <coughs> Council? Madam Clerk. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. All right, those two items carry. Uh, obviously, the moment we've been waiting for, number 10, someone. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, consider, uh, pass for the first time an ordinance amending the 20, 2007 City of Waterloo Code of Ordinances by repealing Title V. Police regulations, Chapter 4, Convenience Store Security, and acting in lieu thereof, a new Title V police regulations, Chapter 4, Convenience Store Security. Second. That motion has been made with the sec second. Uh, Mr. Manning, it's your turn. You, call, you called in earlier. Mayor and Council, um, <coughs> obviously, I think Address. you know. Address. Pardon me? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I own a subsidy <coughs> at 3045 Kimball Avenue here in Waterloo. And um, as you might know, I'm here to ask you to vote no to the ordinance. Um, I do appreciate the work that uh, Lieutenant Fangman has put into uh, this proposed ordinance. And um, I appreciate the fact that he has met uh, with business owners after I uh, came down here the first time and raised some concerns about the ordinance proposal and that uh, I appreciate the fact that some of the um, ordinance, the proposed ordinance has been modified. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna propose that a better um, suggestion is to work with businesses voluntarily instead of using the heavy hand of city government to enforce this. Um, I think it's a, a good idea for businesses to have surveillance systems I would not operate my business without one, but I think that should be my decision, uh, whether I want to have one or not, um, what the standards are going to be. Uh, it is the business owners who suffer the consequences um, if they have a crime committed in their business, 
and they don't have a um, an adequate security system. So I think the decision should left be made left. Um, I'm sorry, left up to them. Um, it may be a good idea, but not all good ideas uh, need to have the force of government behind them. Um, Mr. Uh, Lieutenant Fangman was quoted as saying that you could get a, a system uh, for under a thousand dollars that would comply with this ordinance. The estimate that I got for a system from a from a system installer was two thousand nine hundred and eighty-one dollars, and that was what he considered classified as a budget system, and that was only to comply with the ordinance. I have existing cameras that focus on the areas of my store that I want to see also, and those would have to be replaced to be compatible with a new system. So we're looking at several hundred dollars more for that as well. Um, obviously, it's going to be a boom to the companies who install such systems, and no doubt with the increase in demand, the prices will probably increase as well. Um, we all know that the uh, city of Waterloo does not like does not like it when the federal and state government sends down unfin unfunded mandates. Well, in fact, this is an unfunded mandate on businesses, and it makes Waterloo just a little less business friendly. Um, and my concern really here is government overreach. Is it really the role of city government to tell a business they have to have a security system and what that system has to consist of? Um, there may be some additional crimes that will be solved. I wonder what the cost benefit ratio would be though. If you look at probably tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars that businesses are gonna have to spend to comply versus maybe you know a handful of more crimes that could be solved, um, I don't know. Um, the, um, the chief released some numbers to the courier in January about the crime statistics for 2016. And it's interesting to note that um, there were 61 robberies, which I assume most of the types of crimes that they are hoping to um, address with, the, with this ordinance would be under the, the robbery category. 61 of those compared to 634 burglaries, which I assume a lot of those are, were probably uh, at residences. So we're looking at 61 minus 634, and I'm just wondering if the goal is to, to address crime and the city government wants to impose mandates, will they next um, pass an ordinance that all homeowners will need to have motion-activated floodlights or maybe um, burglar alarms in their homes? I mean, that would, I'm sure that would probably cut down the burglars by, by quite a bit. Um, obviously, you're not going to do that, and I don't think that um, it should be mandated on businesses either. Uh, I'm not going to have time to cover everything, but one other thing I wanted to touch on is there are four businesses in my strip mall. Um, all of them sell food. Yet yeah, I'm the only one. <coughs> excuse me. I'm the only one that's going to be covered by this ordinance. And uh, I know at least two of the businesses I could pr pretty much guarantee you have more customers going in and out of their doors than I do. Uh, yet I will be the one who has to pay for the parking lot camera, maintain it, and if anything happens in the parking lot, I'll be the one who will be called to come in and uh, provide the video for the department, even though it may not have had anything to do with my business. And to me, that doesn't seem fair. So that's my time, but I'll answer any questions if anybody has any. All right, thank you. Let's see if there's some other convo. Okay. And then once we do that, um, we'll open it up to council. They may have questions as well. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council. My name is Todd Obadal. I live at 124 Amity Drive. Uh, yeah, I, I left the meeting uh, last week with the impression that uh, Mr. Manning was on board with the uh, security camera uh, legislation. I guess that was my own misperception of what was presented. Um, I was going through the ordinance uh, some more after just briefly looking at it prior to last week's uh, meeting. And uh, there are some items of concern on there. Uh, uh, section 547C, uh, where it says that the businesses, it might be considered if there was something out of the business's control that maybe they won't be held liable in the ordinance. Uh, I really think that the language should clearly identify the businesses uh, in a case where they would have no uh, control over, over what's happening instead of leaving them in limbo. Um, section 542I has a kiosk exemption for uh, cell phone vendors in malls. Um, 
what about the vendors that aren't in kiosks? What if uh, the Genius Bar mm -hmm. wanted to come to town uh, and set up shop at Crossroads? Would the Genius Bar now be responsible for covering all of Crossroads parking lot? Um, section 546, the random inspections. Uh, there isn't any language in there that designates exactly what these random inspections are. There's not a requirement for a number of random inspections throughout the course of a, of a year or whatever time period. Uh, there's no language about a maximum number. There's no language that specifies a frequency with which a business can randomly be selected in a given period of time. Uh, I think these are items that are, uh, that should be cleaned up before we actually vote and implement um, in, on this, this <coughs> legislation here. And I'll go back to section 543G, not required to monitor. This, uh, this is telling us they don't have to require, they're not required to monitor these cameras. And this is supposed to protect them from civil liabilities. Again, when I was at the first meeting for this, uh, on this matter, it was brought up by the hotel motel people who are now exempt from this legislation, this ordinance, um, that they don't put up cameras in their swimming pools because just by having the cameras up there, they're assuming a liability. I do not believe that a simple city ordinance is going to protect from liability any business that has, um, that has cameras out in the parking lot and would protect, protect them from any civil suits that might come from injuries that would occur out there. I believe this needs to be thoroughly vetted before we put this onto, onto the businesses. Um, kind of wrapping this up here, my, my time is winding down here. Um, there is a lot of, uh, lot of latitude here that is, that is given to the Chief of Police and uh, his designees as far as enforcing uh, who is in compliance and who is not. I think it is uh, much wiser for us to be specific as to what the requirements are instead of having an individual or an individual's appointee arbitrarily dis decide who is in compliance and who is not. Um, I would recommend that uh, this, uh, this, this item be tabled and uh, reconsidered and brought up for a vote at another time. <coughs> Thank you. All right. um, Brian Helmick, 1615 Huntington Road, Waterloo, Iowa. I definitely didn't come here for this tonight. Um, but sitting here, I kind of heard a false equivalency, the idea that a business having cameras is the same thing as a home. As far as I'm concerned, or as far as I'm aware, the public does not frequent individuals homes the way it does a business so these cameras to me while I am healthily skeptical of surveillance and things of that nature I would argue that these cameras do more than protect the business they also protect the people who visit these businesses if a robbery happens while your hours are open it not only prevents the damages lost by the business <coughs> but what if an individual is harmed or if an individual is robbed I believe that a business has a little more responsibility to the public and its safety than someone's individual home. And I just kind of wanted to, that false equivalency of, well, what's next, cameras in our homes? I just feel that's a little step too far. Um, we should be looking at protecting the public that attends and spends their money at these businesses. All right, thank you. David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. Uh, we asked some time ago when they were renewing the Martin Road TIF to leave some of the money out and use that for public safety cameras in high crime areas. This was voted down and the TIF was renewed entirely with even a retired public safety person voting no. Now we want to make businesses put in better cameras and look at, instead of looking at red light cameras, I think we ought to look at public safety cameras and help solve crimes. The paper said cameras can be installed for $1,000. Will these be required to be high resolution? Many TV shows that I watch state the picture was too grainy to make a positive ID. So if you don't have a positive ID, you don't have anything. I would suspect a much better camera to help solve crimes is a much more expensive. So what good is the ordinance that just requires more cameras? We should accent these cameras with public cameras in high crime areas rather than a, than a amount, a, a dollar grabbing red light camera. If some of these areas are in a, a TIF district, use those TIF dollars. Question, which is more important to the citizens and you council members, red lights, running a red light or gunfire? Also, do we 
or the business to have the fiber optics to support the cameras. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Don Sher. I live at 1415 Downing Avenue. I also own and operate the University Avenue Dairy Queen at 2719 University Avenue. I don't mind uh, having cameras in my store. Uh, I have them already. Uh, what I don't like is being told that because I'm a business owner uh, that I have a, a bigger responsibility to foot the cost for the safety of the citizens of Waterloo. Uh, we have police for that. Uh, I've never ever refused to cooperate with the police. Uh, anytime anybody wants my cameras, that they, they can have access to them. That's not a problem. My problem is is being told that I have to. I have a hard enough time operating my business, and uh, more expense doesn't help. I can't raise my prices to cover the cost of this. Uh, when the city runs out of money, they just raise taxes. When I run out of money, I can't pay my bills. Um, like I said, I'm all for public safety. Uh, I just don't think that uh, certain business owners uh, should be tapped for this. Uh, why were the hotel and motel owners excluded from this? If some are excluded, you know, why, why are the rest of us forced to pick up the tab? That's my question. Thank you. All right. Um, Lieutenant Fangman or Chief, um, is there anyone that can talk about, yes, about the hotel motel exclusion? Uh, Lieutenant Fangman will have comments on that. Matter of fact, he'll be able to answer the majority of your questions. I just want to make a couple of comments. This ordinance is very forgiving and very watered down. I want to use the banks as an example. I probably wouldn't patronize a bank that doesn't have the security cameras that they have and the security cameras we see in our banks. This ord ordinance legitimizes what's already occurring at many, many businesses. Uh, it isn't just for armed robberies, it's for many crimes. The amount of cases we have made because of the uh, good quality surveillance cameras that are in businesses have been very, very beneficial. <clears throat> and some of those cameras have gone out into the parking lot or uh, across the street, caught footage across the street, and they've, they've helped us made, make cases on homicides, shootings, other acts of violence. Uh, more than anything, we're trying to legitimize what's already occurring at many businesses. And like I said, this ordinance is very, very watered down. I mean, look at section, I believe it's 558. Uh, the exemptions that the police chief has allowed. Uh, you can come in and s just give me a plan. Give my office a plan, what you're gonna do to maintain the security of your business. Because if you're continually having thefts or robberies, quite frankly, you're wasting valuable resources. I know you thought you'd be able to hang out in the back a little bit. <laughs> he asked a question about the hotel. Hotel. Thank you, fellas. Yeah, the reason that, well, hey, you're correct, they were uh, including the original proposal several months ago. The reason we did change it uh, to eliminate them at this time was purely because we were focusing in on the cash businesses. And uh, probably less than one, maybe 2% of a hotel's uh, income is derived from cash. It's usually credit cards. So that's why they were eliminated at the end. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. It can Oh, yeah, you can go ahead. I wanted to get public done first. If you can jot down some notes, I'll come right back to you, Councilman Jacobs. Yes, sir. <coughs> uh, Tom Nealon, 325 Cornwall Avenue in Waterloo. Uh, I guess my question is, is when the federal and the state government have passed laws in the past um, throughout, they typically do something called grandfathering. Um, right now, we've got two gentlemen that own businesses here that have security systems? Was it considered at any time that these groups that have already taken into consideration have put in the securities cameras 
that they be grandfathered instead of having to go out within one year and spend more money on their businesses, on their security, instead of grandfathering them in and accepting the current um, security systems that they have. Okay, thank you, Mr. Neelan. Ms. Latina Fagman. Yes, that was brought up in a meeting we had with, uh, I think I believe it was Burger King that brought up the concept of grandfathering. It was discussed and we just chose to uh, not do that route. My name is Bill Baker. I don't actually live in Waterloo, but my children do. They live at 1614 Woodmire. Um, I can kind of speak on both sides of this as a previous business owner. I also did some tech support for a security company. Um, as a business owner, installing higher quality security cameras lowers your employee theft because as an employee, I would be scared to death knowing you just put in high quality cameras. I'm not gonna steal from you. Um, as a customer, I've been parked in Hurricane Grill out at Crossroads. My car was vandalized, but because they didn't have any, any cameras that went outside into the parking lot, I couldn't contact my insurance company with the, the vandalism because I had no proof of where it happened or how it happened. Um, and Subcity, I know you can't raise your prices, but as a customer, knowing that I'm in a safer environment, you might not raise your prices, but hey, I'm going to come into Bill, my store. Bill, speak week. directly to me. Oh, sorry. But I'm going to come into your store more often, so there is an offset as far as the cost goes. When you have a little paper store, your employees aren't stealing from you, and your customers are coming more often. <coughs> so it kind of pays for itself in the long run. All right. So you're, yes. you're telling Mr. Shares you're going to visit double the amount of times you visited before. <laughs> All right. Thank Sub you. City's the best place in town to get a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Next. Uh, again, since I'm here, uh, James Wilson, uh, Waukee. Um, I do recall, though, when I lived in Waterloo, there was a city council forum uh, for political candidates right here in City Hall. And during that forum, um, a council member's car was vandalized right out here in City Hall's parking lot. And when myself and some other citizens went to the police department, um, the, own, the cameras in City Hall's parking lot did not capture the crime. Uh, so I think if you're gonna make businesses put in cameras, you probably should start at City Hall. Um, because you couldn't see, and it was a councilman's car parked in a councilman's spot. So. Um, just a valid, a valid point. All right. Uh, I think the chief has some comments for that one. That is untrue. They are panning cameras. They pan the entire parking lot. They didn't catch the person in the act, but they captured the damage done to the car. They pan back and forth. Okay. All right. Thank you. Is there any more um, uh, folks in the... Any, anyone else um, that didn't have an opportunity to address the council want to address the council going a second time mr. mayor uh, mr. Jacobs had a question first Why don't we have to close the hearing uh, it's not on there but hearing. I think we got to close the hearing we don't have to close it's not a hearing mr. Jacobs yeah I just want to follow up as well uh, you know it's it's well, all for public safety, and, and I do feel that we need to figure out a way to install cameras um, from the city's perspective. Um, and I think we need to take that more seriously as well. And, um, and I'm all for businesses voluntarily putting up cameras, and I know they will uh, as they grow. And, um, but this is a really business unfriendly ordinance. It's easy to sit over here and write up an ordinance until you've owned a business and tried to run something and we're going to throw this expense on top of you and that's what these guys are telling us right here and this is just a, a tip of the iceberg of the businesses out there that are hanging on by a thread and we want to say go ahead and, and you can you can afford three thousand five thousand more dollars um, you go help us police the city well that's great if they will voluntarily but that's not that's not our place in city government so that's their place it's their private place it's not public property it's their private property so 
you know, to do that, I think, is a really business unfriendly move. Even if you were to grandfather in these guys, what message are we saying to other folks that want to move here? Noel's trying to bring somebody in, and we have this anti-business culture, which, oh, by the way, you have to do this. Uh, system we're going to come in through here with this ordinance and we have the right to inspect at random we have a right to go ahead and throw in enforcement and civil penalties on you if if you are deemed not to be in compliance with this ordinance how unfair and, and how what a, what a way to, to turn away businesses from Waterloo and this is our, our only solution I, I, I just think that that this is something that's ill-advised and not well thought out and we think of it how it affects our businesses out here so i do not support it mr mayor mr lynn um i want to make a motion to amend chapter four five dash four dash two number one i want to add o which would be a new definition and that different definition would be principal city vertical infrastructure and the, the uh, definition would be the um, that th those would be facilities the public frequently visits and what I'm trying to do here is if we're going to pass an ordinance like this then we should be abiding by the same ordinance in our business operations so, so you're talking about public infrastructure or public building in other words um, the library the rec center, the, the sports complex, young arena, city hall, places like that. Can you read the section that you're amending again? So in other words, I would be in section five, dash four, dash two. Number one, business establishment or establishments under definitions. We would add, I propose to add O, a principal city vertical infrastructure or however we should say that in other words the major buildings where the public frequently visits okay. thank I'm, you i'm not talking about parks or but since there's no second i guess second thank you i actually kind of like that what number are you on again, Tom? I'm he, sorry. He's adding, it's right, it would be right here. He's adding a five, was it 5.4 point? And he's just adding the O in there. Uh, under he, he basically saying that um, the buildings that we have that the public goes to often, yeah. that we have, exactly. we have a level of security catch exactly. too. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor? Oh. Yeah. Up to I hear what um, Councilman Lind is saying, but didn't we just exclude the hotels and those from this ordinance from a standpoint? He, he's talking, he's talk, I'm not to cut you off, and if I do, I apologize. He's talking about public buildings, so City Hall, um, the library. Yeah, I, I understand that parks. aspect of it, but my understanding of this ordinance was is this places that did cash and that type of thing, and that was one of the things that I heard was is, is the hotels weren't there because of the fact that they do not do a lot of cash business so when you when you look at it from a standpoint of okay the reason that you're pulling the hotels out and they're a public from a standpoint of I realize they're private but public goes there and what I'm hearing here is is, is that you're taking the library the different places like that and putting them in this ordinance and leaving the hotels out and it's just a concern for me right I think he's saying if we're requiring requiring uh, others to do it then we need right. to Sorry. we need to do it ourselves mm -hmm. I Mr. Mayor. that aspect of it Mr. Mayor we have no control of the counties and school he's just talking about our public infrastructure right so correct maybe you should say city city, city. would it maybe be more clear if you said city facilities sure principal mm -hmm. city facilities just throw that well, the only reason I kind of changed it because if we say principal city facilities, then the golf course, pro shop, yes. The golf course, probably no. We'd have to work on that. Okay. But if I didn't get it introduced today, then I'm forever barred from bringing this up. Mr. Mayor? Mr. 
more so uh, don't most I mean like the library I think they have so many cameras oh, it's absolutely astounding um, and I'm sure that the City Hall has quite a few cameras um, so my question would be what facilities that the city has do not have cameras where there would be some concern that they should have cameras well sports blocks for one well director hudding is so please we have cameras too. <laughs> paul hudding leisure services director the sports plex does have a comprehensive set of security cameras young arena however does not and we've been intending to install those as funds become available um, the golf pro shops um, those are operated as private businesses I'm not sure which pros are um, implementing cameras I'd have to look into that so we can <coughs> I mean we can absolutely take a look I mean every you know is ordinances have compromises any other questions council well I actually kind of like that amendment to the standpoint of the library maybe some outside mm -hmm. cameras uh, I mean with the Wi-Fi system they have I would have said I would think the cost wouldn't be that large for the for the library um, I can't really think of another if well, we can you know I think there's room to start having that in our mind that we start putting cameras up where we can as funding you know like where we can okay, so we have an amendment to add an O and uh, we can work with the language so it fits right mr. mayor gonna have it right to Principal city facilities that the public frequently visits. <coughs> and that'll be 5 4 2. Section 1. Section 1. 1 0. Yeah, let's try that. Does that meet your. Yeah. So that is on the floor right now to add that amendment. Yep. So we need to add this amendment first. I'm waiting. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, I believe that. Uh, maybe there's somebody here can answer this i think the library has cameras both inside and outside Definitely. their facility i don't know if everyone does but we can take a scan to see which one are the principals right. i mean it's it's a compromise right. finally we got a compromise one way so right. um i mean unless we want to sit here and go through every public facility uh, where we patronize but we can we can work through we can work through taking a look at it. I don't know how we'll pay for it, but we'll work through and try to get to that point. So we have a, we have a, an amendment on the floor to add 5 4 2 1 0. Madam Clerk, this is just adding it. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. All right. So we'll take one more question from the audience, then we're going to go ahead and vote. <clears throat> Forest Dillaboo, 1725 Huntington Road. As an overtaxed taxpayer <coughs> in the city of Waterloo, I would like you folks to, before you pass this ordinance with this amendment, let the taxpayers know how much it's going to cost us to add these cameras to all these buildings. Uh, we have no idea. You're about to spend money or require something. You have no idea what it's going to cost. With a tight budget and and buildings having tight budgets, I hear the library talking about they're not able to, to keep up financially. They're f afraid of they can't buy enough books to keep credited or whatever they need. We need some more thought on this before you pass it. Thank you kindly. All right, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Jacobs. Make one more comment. So, you know, I, it sounds like. We're looking at this just keep in mind this ordinance crosses the line we're we're going into a place we don't belong into a business's <coughs> personal space private space making requirements of them to 
install, to monitor, to review. We have inspections at random. We have penalties in store for them if they don't comply. Um, and so we talk about jobs. We talk about being business friendly and bring bring good things to Waterloo. If you pass this tonight, then you're just you just passed one more thing to chase people away from Waterloo or, or have them consider not to come here. So another uh, business unfriendly move on our part. Madam Clerk. Mr. Lind. Yes. Mr. Amos. Yes. Mr. Schmidt. Yes. Mr. Welfer. Yes. Mr. Jacobs. No. Mr. Morrissey. Yes. Mr. Powers. Yes. Mr. A, Mayor. I'm not a psychic, but I think I know how this is going to go. I bet <laughs> you Mr. 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 Morrissey. Like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. A motion has been made with the second, Madam Clerk. Mr. Amos? No. Mr. Schmidt? No. Mr. Welper? No. Mr. Jacobs? No. Mr. Morrissey? No. Mr. Powers? No. Mr. Lynn? No. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to be made with second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.